Now at 10, calls for help during a deadly encounter. He's beating another man. It's a naked oh, man. Naked man. Beating Cannibalistic another man. attack a face to the that led police to shoot a man they say was gnawing at the face of someone else in the street. On that horrific <laughs> attack by my, the My eyes got plucked, plucked out. 75 to 80 percent of his face, the victim's face, was missing. In an attack that no one could understand. Hi, this is Lucky Smith with Starver News Magazine, and I'm here with Michael Blue, Jason Lockhart, and P. Frank Williams. We're here to talk about Miami Zombie Attacks. Um, is that the name of the film? No, Miami Zombie. Miami Zombie. Okay. Yeah. And from my understanding, this is in regards to the event that happened in Miami in 2012 with um, Eugene, it was, what was his name? It was Eugene, correct? Ruby Eugene. Eugene. Ruby Eugene. What inspired you guys to make this movie based on that event? Roughly about a year ago, I was just really inspired by a, a lot of the successful true story dramatic features that I was I was seeing at the, at the box office, and I wanted to, to make one that inspired me, and then I kind of looked back in the last few years at, at stories that had, had touched me personally. This was one that I, I remember being glued to the news on, and just the more I researched, the more mystery I found behind it, so I kept even deeper. Started to find a lot of uh, sympathy for the character, and I wanted to tell his story, his story with a, such a tragic, a tragic ending. Well, well, yeah, it was just I remember seeing on the news and hearing about him eating. Was it he? He ate the homeless man's face, correct? And then he was correct. shot. Yeah, he was shot three times. Yes, yes. but. What's interesting about this is that, Jason, most of, I mean, reading your bio, most of your, your work in the past has all been really comedy. So... I know. Hey. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, I, uh, I, I even thought about leaving filmmaking after, after some of my last few projects because I just wasn't that inspired by the storytelling. I've always been a real hard worker, a real passionate worker my whole life. And, I was just kind of making projects and having a real good time, but but it wasn't fulfilling enough. And as soon as I as I realized why and dove into this project, I I suddenly saw a heck of a future in, in filmmaking. Well, I saw the trailer for Casting Couch. I mean, your your work is funny. So oh. and what's interesting also is. Um, P. Uh, Frank, your your work is this is very different from your work as well from the other projects you have produced. Uh, what, well, no, I mean I, I think obviously producing a lot of documentary, television documentary films, um, sort of you know episodic like Unsung and American Gangster and stuff like that is in the music genre. But I also produce another series called Celebrity Crime Files that shares on TV One, which is actually sort of similar. We just did a piece about Secure Stewart's Chris Lighty, so um, kind of like this. We're a little bit mysterious. I'm just taking some of that energy of the episodic television documentaries that I do and extended it now to narrative, you know, feature. So, so we, we call it a cousin, so to speak. We're not saying it's totally different, but we just, we just have a, 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 a cousin kind of project. So, so, so this, you feel like this is like a distant cousin from, like, you know, fifth or fourth? From the American gangsters, living yeah. files, you know, yeah, greedy kind of, you know, urban stories about people we never really know about or just telling their stories. And I think that this story is great. I mean, a lot of people know about the bath salt incident, but I don't think they know the backstory about the guy, how he ended up in that place, and seeing a three-dimensional portrait of that. So I think that's, that's exactly what we're trying to do, is humanize this guy so you see it for yourself. And how do how did your trio get started? Because, Michael, you were also working, you know, some of the movies that you worked on, this is different as well, in my opinion, from your previous work, like... Yeah, switch. Right. I mean, you did more comedies too. Sure, I worked as part of a more of part of like a production company team before, but this is kind of um, 
you know, taking over the reins as a film producer for me has been a really exciting challenge. Um, we were actually connected through uh, this guy, Ryan Brown, who uh, is, uh, is one of the other producers, and he's a fantastic cinematographer. He kind of linked, uh, had previously linked uh, P. Frank with Jason, and then um, I guess like a couple months ago linked me up with Jason as well, and we all kind of hit it off. Had a couple meetings, all of us got along really well and thought that we had a shared vision for the project. Well, oh, so where are you guys at with the project at this point? Uh, I think we're, we're in the final stages of development before we, we make that official cross into pre production. We're, we're tying, all, you know, tying all the knots, dotting the I's, crossing the T's, that kind of stuff. Do you guys. And trying to link up with a partner that we think makes sense for the project and understands where we're, we're coming from. And, you know, we're just over at AFM today. We had a great uh, promotional um, event today where we. Um, Michael was able to arrange where we had like some newsies, you know, extra, extra passing out kind of like flyers and promotion and sort of making a start about, you know, Miami Zombie. So we're ready. Like we're just close to, you know, hopefully we can have a finance there and start to shoot hopefully in the spring right before summer. And also I saw um, in your synopsis of the film that you guys are going to address mental illness. And... The, the title of the film is American Zomb is a Miami Zombie. So are you, are we going to expect a traditional zombie film or how are you guys going to spin this? Is there any way of letting me know this without spoiling the film? Sure. So the film it's not really a zombie film at all. It's, it's really more of like a kind of like a fruit bill station where it follows one character down this dark path. Um, Rudy Eugene started out as a, a really uh, you know up and coming good-looking high school football star, and through a series of, of different factors in his life, largely battling different demons in his life, some, uh, you know, some possibly mental, some possibly dealing with drugs, some, some could be also some supernatural elements in there, according to his close friends and family. Uh, we don't really know what caused him to become the zombie that, kind of zombie creature that he becomes at the end of his life during, during that uh, vicious attack, but... We do know that he had a lot of trials and tribulations, and that it's a really interesting story to call him, follow him on that path. So it's, it's not a zombie horror movie in any sense. It's much more of a, a really gritty character biopic on, on the man who became the monster that everyone knows as, knows as the Miami zombie. Hmm. And how long, how long have you guys been working on this project to, up to this point now? Well, Jason, uh, just a few months. Yeah, well, I think I think Jason has spent about a year researching the project before tackling the script. And then Jason, how long did it take you to write the script once you had your research complete? I, I think got the first draft in, in about a month after yeah after collecting extensive notes and research just on on the guy what I could find. And from that point, I think it was a. a Another few months till uh, P. Frank and myself came on board, and we, we, we've been working on it for about a couple months. As they mentioned, we just did this very exciting um, newsy flash mob event at AFM. We were actually in the main lobby of AFM. Um, what my photographers? Yeah, what my photographers was there today. Covering, yeah, we met yeah. them. They were fantastic. Mm. I'm sorry. Uh, so, so you guys had the AF. You guys had like. What was what what happened today during the what made you guys decide to do this then? Sure, that was kind of my brainchild. I wanted to do something to set us apart from all the other indie filmmakers out there, and, and this is such a news centric story. I think there was over something over a billion media impressions covering this story, both during the event and the weeks following, and then even years after doing follow up stories. So we felt like this was an event that you could talk to anyone from any corner of the country and really in many countries around the world from what we found at AFM, which is exciting. And everyone kind of knows and gets the story, and even a lot of people recognize uh, Rudy Eugene's mugshot from all the articles. So we felt it would be a really good way to bring this story front and center to the minds of a lot of the different AFM uh, participating finance and production and distri distribution companies. and. What better way to do that and grab the attention than kind of that flash mob concept that's been really great in recent years. You know, doing that with the newsy theme, I think, honors the integrity of the story versus uh, doing another concept with the zombies would have been kind of, kind of unfair and untrue to the, to the story that, that we have. So we thought 
that was a way to, to both respectfully, but at the same time, very excitingly, bring that story to the forefront of everyone's attention. And what do you what do you hope to? What is your message that you're hoping that people will get from after seeing Miami Zombie about? The was it the man behind the monster? What what's the message you want people to walk away from after seeing your film? I'm certainly hoping people leave the theater talking about the film and questioning why did it happen. It, if, as soon as you start to research why did he, you know, cause such a horrific attack, it's it's a pure myth. I mean, there's such sparks in, in numerous directions all over the internet, and without being inside his mind on that day, you know, no one will ever know. But from all the research, um, there are definitely a couple possibilities that, that got him to where he was, and I'd love to know them all in one kind of cohesive uh, mind narrative and have people discuss what they think happened by the time the movie's over. Mm. And... Yeah, I think this is a chance to really look at a news um, item that a lot of people saw it bring you all the behind the scenes about it and then just kind of give you some factual stuff but also a little bit left to the imagination so this is a story that sort of galvanized the nation you know I mean, this is as uh, Michael said over a billion impressions of people that have seen it so I think a lot of folks want to know what really happened how did this guy end up on the side of the road doing what he did people don't just end up there there's a lot of stuff that led us to that so this kind of takes you to some of that do you think the news reporters that covered the event um showed him in a fair light, showed Eugene in a fair light? I think the news reporters, you know, they, they definitely covered the news. They definitely covered the attack. I think without doing extensive research and really going into his past, it, in part, it's been a brief to know what kind of person he really was. And... You said that mental illness. What type of mental illnesses will you guys be covering in the film? What issues? Cause I know that you Ruby Eugene had, you know, there was suspected that he had a drug problem, but and understand you guys are gonna be covering drugs in regards to this. But what about the mental illness? Is there? Can you name a few that you guys will be discussing in the film? Sure. So. Uh... In, he um he had a, a family history of mental illness. Mm -hmm. Medical and the history weren't really specific on what those were, but we have some guesses. But again, we don't want to really pigeonhole him into any one specific disability or illness. We really want to tease at the fact that these are some ideas that might have happened, and really leave it to the viewer to, to take away what they want based on the facts of the story and based on the narrative of the story. Uh, I mean, there, people have thrown out the word schizophrenia, but he was never officially diagnosed with schizophrenia. Uh, but it could have been a drug thing. I, I think, touching on the previous question, a lot of the reporters' knee-jerk reaction was to dub him the bath salt zombie, but something very interesting was the medical examiner was unable to actually find any bath salt in the system to prove conclusively with a test. However, they didn't rule out another similar street drug that they didn't have a test for, but they, you know, they, they just couldn't rule anything out, but they couldn't conclusively say anything. And that kind of has the mystery of everything, really. You know, what was wrong with him mentally, if anything? Was it drugs? Was it mental? Was it, uh, I think his, his own mother thought he was he's literally possessed by a demon, and uh, his ex-wife even thought that he was under a voodoo curse. Hmm. That's really interesting. Do you, um, do you think that there was outside help that could have helped Eugene to prevent something like this from happening? Is it something that maybe could have been helped? It had people, had he seen a psychiatrist or been in rehab? I mean, I know it's a speculation, but I'm just wondering, is it something that outsiders could have done to prevent this tragedy? Hmm. Well, I think obviously, you know, the film kind of lets you see that there may have been some just sort of hints that there was, you know, curses from his dad and stuff like that. And a lot of times people like him you know, really don't have the, the means to get the kind of care and help that they need. So I think it's best for a lot of people who watch the film and they can kind of make their own decisions about, you know, who could have helped him. It's my thought that, you know, maybe we couldn't help him. Maybe he was already sort of, you know, caught up with something that was beyond a medical examination. 
And I'm, you know, from here, from talking to you guys, reading the synopsis, I'm really excited about this. So I understand you guys are filming that, are going to start filming summer of 2015. When can we expect the release of this film to, for theaters to be ready? We're, we're, we're aiming for it spring or summer of 2016. Yeah, we're looking to hopefully lock in our cast, you know, in the next six months here, you know, the next, next few months, the next six months, and then be shooting sometime around next summer and then, you know, have it pretty quick turnaround for post and, and have it out and hopefully and release sometime in the spring or summer of 2016. Wow. That's, so you guys are doing, you guys are really going really fast with this. Um, hey man, that's, I think it's, 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 such a, it's such a real story. I think it's such more, more digestible for the audience because people have already heard about the incident. So, um, we have some facts based on this life, but you know, it'll be easy to film because there's sort of a real person versus, you know, a lot of films that you see are, are totally made up. You know, this comes from a real person's life. And have you guys, did you guys talk to Ruby, uh, Ruby's, Eugene's family? Are they okay? How do you feel about the film? Uh, the only the only family member that I reached out to was his mother, but I've yet to actually make contact with her. Okay. Um, is there any anything else you guys want to add about the film that maybe I, that you guys want would like the audience to know? Well, I just on that last question, we're not we're we're not planning to show anyone really in a negative light. We uh we think that we pay very good respect to Rudy and we feel like he had some really good intentions and it was more a matter of just not being able to, to overcome his own circumstances and his own demons that kinda of let him down this path. It wasn't because he had any malicious intent. So I think that's important to, to keep in mind. Yeah, and I think one of the things that Jason is mentioning, you know, um, the almost that here's I think it's something a lot of people can relate to is that a young guy in America trying to figure himself out and trying to, you know, get his opportunities. And every time you make a little something happen, there's something else that kind of stops him. So, you know, two steps, steps forward, three steps back. So I think that's, for me, the main thing is showing that, you know, the young person trying to figure it out. And no matter what he does, you know, something still happens. Right. And then... Yeah. So I can certainly say the more I researched him, the more I empathized with his life and grew to really uh, appreciate the, the hardships that he, he suffered through life and, Love to, to show him as a as a strong, empathetic character who was a, who was a likable guy, and, and no matter how hard he tried, he, he always felt like the world was against him. And that's actually been quoted by some people close to him, and that's such a strong a strong statement for for someone to imagine or for someone to feel. And if we can convey that to the audience, I think we're going to have a lot of empathetic viewers out there. And you so, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say, for any for anyone who wants more information, we're pretty active on social media. We have a website set up, uh, MiamiZombieMovie.com, and then we're on Facebook, Facebook.com slash MiamiZombieMovie, and on Twitter, we're at MiamiZombieFilm. And I, and I really like the angle that you guys are going with this, because the thing about life is anyone, given the right circumstances and enough chain of events to happen can snap so we never know what anybody's snap you know last straw is going to be so i really am looking forward to seeing this this film because i would like to know what were the chain of events that led up to what hit you know became headliners for months thank you yeah, that's the film is definitely going to be able to give you a little bit more of a, a background and not the total story, but, you know, a really good idea of what happened in this really bizarre, really strange event, you know? Yes, and that's life. We never really ever get those total stories. There's always, you know, three different versions. His version, other people's version, and the outside perspective. So it's very different each time. But I'm, I'm glad that you guys are looking at this. It seems like more from a journalistic point of view. That you guys are, are, are collecting more facts. And that actually is the fairest thing you can do to you, you for Eugene. Is just to report the facts. What? Thank you. Um, your website is coming up. Uh, do you guys have any other websites people can reach out to you guys? Besides Twitter? Well, yeah, we also, I also have my company Profit from www.profitfilming.com P-R-O-P-H-E-T from it. Where there's a bunch of, you know, prior work, you know, upcoming stuff like that at pfrankwilliams.com. 
come. So those are sort of the personal places. But obviously, as, as Michael mentioned, you've got the information about the film itself. All right. right. And then to tag on to that one more is uh, angryleo.com. It's uh, Jason's, uh, Jason and production company. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Um, this is Le- and Thank you so much for having us. We really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. This is Lucky Smith saying goodnight.